Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Clay Ramage back again with a good, with, I'm trying to talk too fast, so I need to slow down. I am back again with another Goodwill Bins haul. Part of the reason I'm talking fast is because I'm excited about what I found today. So my excitement is showing through in my uh, speed of my speech, shall we say. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm excited to show you. Some of the things we found today it's a hodgepodge as always which i just have this hodgepodge way of shopping and uh it works for me so that's the main thing right it works i sell a lot and uh keep the variety going and i think that's part of the reason is because it's uh, i got a good variety because sometimes it's hard you know i mean as you you know get into reselling and you're in it a longer time you kind of get this following and people buy certain things from you i'm gonna sorry i'm gonna elaborate a little bit this morning which i usually don't but um like i've tried different things like clothing shoes and i just don't have luck with those things um i can get the popular brands that sell well i can price them what i feel is competitive and uh, not too cheap you know me i like to be cheap but um you know pricing them competitively but not too low and they just sit and I'm like but there's other stuff I can list and it sells immediately you know to me immediately is within 24 hours of listing it and um you know but nobody else picks it up so I'm like I don't know I don't I'm not going to try to figure it out there's I'm sure there's you know if I wanted to spend hours and hours and hours and hours doing analysis and whatever I could figure it out but I, if it works that's what I'm going to go with so that's <laughs> What I buy is what I think will work for my particular clientele. So let's just hop right in here because it's a um, little bit of boring, a little bit of exciting, a little bit of cute, a little bit of common, a little bit of unusual. And one particularly high-end piece that I was really surprised, it actually has a personal connection that I found out that I wasn't aware of quite until today. So let's just get right into it. Um, I found a bin full of, this is the cuteness, and this, my wife will love this one, I have to take it home and see if she wants it, flocked miniature animals. There's dogs, giraffe, there's kitty, obviously, I know some of you may want this beautiful kitty, he does have some blue marks on his face, um, bunny, another purple kitty, um, there's lots of dogs and cats big poodle he's cute there's some like this dog is in a box but the dog is fleeced the box isn't so it's a real hodgepodge um this one's really cool this is a orangutan he's even orange he's kind of cool there's an elephant it's flocked he's missing a little bit of flock on his back but he's cute he's almost a pink his cheeks are pink so <laughs> as you guys know we have the pink elephant connection I'm just trying to see. There's, there's another kitty with a scratching post. There's another doggy wearing goggles. I'm trying to see. Oh, this one is got a little. That would be a teacup poodle, I guess, right? <laughs> Cute. And what else? Oh, here's a horse. Here's an elephant. Another one. So lots of fun little creatures. And like I say, lots of dogs and cats. So I won't show you the rest because there's a lot. There's probably 30 different <laughs> animals, most of them dogs and cats, and a number of them are duplicates. But again, these little things I sell at the Pink Elephant fairly well. And, uh, you know, if some of you guys are interested in like a dog lot or a kitty lot, you know, I'll list them out there for you guys. So just send me an email. E email description is in, email is in the description below. And I was putting them in these. I found four pink Fiesta Wear mugs no plates but i did find the mugs and it does say fiesta wear on the bottom but it's very hard to read because fiesta wear stamped them and then glazed over the stamp and in this case they glazed them so heavy that it's really hard to see it is all in the small font there's no capital letters which means typically that they would be an older one they don't have all the additional numbers that the later ones have so i believe these are more vintage 
than modern. So, and at our bins, we pay, what do we now pay? I spent $43 all total today. We pay outlet, 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 $1.19, $1.99, $49.49, $0.49 cents an inch on books, $1.99, that was the weight, $1.19 was like a house, okay, so it's $0.50, cents, $0.50 cents each, so I, no, because I bought more than that, it's $0.49 cents each, oh, the $2, oh, that was that, I was just trying to make sense of the receipt, sorry, I'm kind of rambling on, so yeah, those, the glassware actually didn't raise in price along with everything else. So it was 49 cents for the glassware each. Um, then I found this. This is fun. It's Snoopy. He's a, a Feliz Navidad is what he plays. Now, he no longer plays. So I'm sure his batteries are probably dead. He's still attached in the box. Um, so I picked him up. Oh, he's got a long string there. Um, is this where you put the batteries in? Yeah. So I'll put new batteries in him. And if he works, then we'll list him. He's a $25 item as is. So that's pretty cool. I was excited to find Mr. Snoopy. At first I wasn't going to because I'm like, uh, another thing for me to list. But he's really cute. He's a little different. And it's a consistently sold item. So well, I'm going to adjust this camera just a hair because it feels like it's down just a little too far. My head's getting chopped off. Anyway. Um, then I found a number of books, found this one, Giants in the Earth. This is published in 1929, originally. Now this one, it was an old library copy, and this library card dates back to 1964. And then it looks like 1975 was the last time it was stamped. And this was from the Milwaukee Public Library System. Um, and this is a, you know, 10 to $15 book. So that was a good find. I don't believe it's the very first edition, you know, printing. It is a first edition, but not the first printing. Um, and then I found some golden books. And these are in great condition. So little baby farm animals, Pinocchio, the little red caboose, baby mother's goose, babies, baby's mother goose. That one's got that goodwill sticker on it and then toodle so and again i sell these for you know usually a dollar 99 down at the pink elephant if they're in good shape and oh this one isn't in such good shape it's got the corner chewed off <laughs> but somebody was teething obviously and i don't know if it was a dog or a child <laughs> that's the thing about books i never quite know then there was this book which is all in german but it's about a cathedral I believe it's German. Yes. Wisens. Um, so yeah, I just thought it was a cool book. And it does have an inscription from 1955 on the first page. So now that was cool. Picked up a paperback of Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Again, when I can find good titles, you know, well-known authors, I pick those up at the bins because again, they're you know we're paying um 49 cents an inch now so you know like this book 10 cents so the heinz salad book and i'll put this down at the pink elephant for like five dollars um found two of these which are a series of books but i found these two one is uh jonathan swift and the other's h Ryder haggard um and these are 10 to 15 dollar books so this one's more 10 this one's closer to 15. um so that was cool. Then I was excited to find this one. It's called the General Mills Foods Kitchen Cookbook. So this is published by General Mills, which um, I don't know if you guys know, but General Mills is based out of the Twin Cities here. I know people that work there. And uh, so it's a local thing. And this book is in excellent condition. Um, no writing, no stains. Uh, it is has some discoloration around the edges, as you can see, just from age and sitting on you know, in exposed to the air, so it discolors a little bit. But again, this is a ten to fifteen dollar book, and because it's so thick, I probably paid 
you know, almost a dollar for it, but still worth it. And I love the graphics on these old books. All right. Oh, and then what I didn't show you was I have all the little fuzzy animals in this vintage brownware bowl, um, which is an older bowl. It's only marked USA on the bottom and a mold number. Doesn't have a name, does it? Nine inch, yeah, it's USA nine inch. So it's a nine inch bowl, step down rim. Um, just really cool, brown glazeware, obviously not high quality, utilitarian piece. Um, and again, 49 cents I paid for the bowl, so. And then we had some others that I had in my cart for a while and I was gonna buy and then I changed my mind and decided to just do this one because I felt this was the most sellable. The others were casserole crocs, um, but they didn't have lids. And I thought I could try to sell them without the lids, but it'd be better if I could sell it with the lid. So then I was excited to find these little sherbet cups. There's three of them. Oh, this one's got a chip. I didn't notice that before. Yep, just that one has a chip. So we'll have two of them. <laughs> Again, 49 cents each for these. Um, and uh, they're uranium glass, so they glow in the glow in the under a black light. Oh, no, it's too bright in here to see that. But so that's cool. Those are you know I'll price those at like five dollars. Put them down the pink elephant. Those do well for me. And now this is the item that I was number one surprised to find and excited to find. It was this box, and what's my rule at the Pink Elephant? Oh, look, you know what that means? That means somebody bought this as an in an auction lot. And then, and there was another piece there that had an auction tag on it. They got it, apparently, some pieces, they, they must have got a lot of stuff, and you know, a lot, as in a bunch of stuff in one auction and sorted through it and didn't take these. Well, I'm quite glad because on the front of this, it's hard to read, but it's M-A-R-G-H-A-B, Magab, I think it's how you, Margab, I think it's how you say that. And they're a linen company. They make high quality linens. Now, they were actually disenfranchised, which means they basically kind of stopped business as an official company in 1980, but they were in business from like 1955 to 1980, and they made high quality linens like this embroidered linens that's what they're famous for it's irish linen it is shipped to the island of madeira and here's where the family collection comes in because my grandfather immigrated to the united states from the island of madeira um, off the coast of portugal and what, so it also had this little booklet in it, it says linens by margab these were sold at Dayton's um, in Minneapolis. And when you read this little book, on the second page, it says, imagine a beautiful old Portuguese palacio on the island of Madeira, where vast bolts of glowing colored linen from the famed blooms of Northern Ireland, Ireland, a myriad of colored threads from France, sheer margandy, fabric of pure cotton, masterpiece of Swiss weavers are all assembled to serve as backgrounds for the Margab designs. In turn, each piece reaching the patiently trained peasant hands of a Margab embroideress will come into its own individual perfection. Picture her taking stitch by stitch so that you may own a precious piece of Margab. And here's part of the reason why this particular linen company is so expensive is because the ladies were paid by the stitch. So depending upon the design, some of these stitches could have 70,000 stitches. Um, but the founder of the company insisted that the ladies embroidering these were paid by the stitch. Can you imagine? Number one, can you imagine trying to track your stitches? I would have a hard time with that. But um, I, that was awesome to find. This original pamphlet still in there, plus still in the original Dayton's box with the, with the name on the outside. Now these are quite collectible quite desirable and depending upon how many there's eight napkins and depending upon the design you know there's many factors when you're selling these things they will go from anywhere from 100 to 300 dollars this has eight 
Um, so I am expecting to get between $100 and $150 for this. And it's, it's a beautiful floral design. It's like in a yellowish color. If it was a little brighter color, it would probably be a little more. Um, but I am super excited about this because, um, yeah, that was a great find at the bins. But it's always my principle, always open boxes. And this was a had a rubber band around it. And nobody even looked at it. So I opened it up, saw the napkins in there, recognized the name and said, it's in my card. And again, I paid 50 cents. Wow, great stuff. All right, moving right along. Found this vintage plastic mug, and it is by Newmar out of Chicago. I just love the graphics, the orange. It's quite dirty. Needs a good clean. Um, so I did find a number of glasses and cups today, which I said I wasn't going to do, but I still do. Then I found this little um, Stein-like thing, but it says Pennsylvania Dutch Charlottesville, Pennsylvania. So it was a souvenir piece. I thought it interesting. It had that big blue blob on the back. Somebody painted in very dark blue and apparently left it that way. So I don't know if that was the, what that was for. I'm not even going to guess. But I was excited to find this. Oh, I got two other really cute things coming up too. So stay tuned. I found this recipe box. It's a wooden box. I don't, you know, it's not, I don't think it's super old, probably 80s. But I just thought it was a great box. So picked that up. Picked up this vintage camera filter, Toyo. These are not, you know, that's probably a eight to ten dollar item. But I'll lot uh, filters like that together if, if I know they might fit the same camera. Um, and then, you know, sell them that way. The, I saw this trivet and I just loved it. So it's a wall, you can hang it on the wall or you could have it on the ground. Uh, Berg Bergren Originals, Libertyville, Illinois. Oh, that's funny. I used to work right outside Libertyville. And that's where I'd stay when I'd go work at the home office. Anyway, um, it says, love is only for the young, the middle-aged, and the old. I love that. It's an old, um, it says the original design is hand-screened. Yeah, so... I just thought that was really cool. And these Scandinavian designs are very popular around around here. So that'll go down to the pink elephant. I found this vintage Mickey Mouse Easter sticker. Um, it's stained glass window art, it says. So this is one you would stick on the window. So that's kind of a fun little item. Still in its original little package. And then I found this San Francisco print that's signed. Um, by the artist in 1987. Nice little ink sketch. I thought it was great. And found this vintage. Not exactly sure what it is. Oh. Uh, it's a leather case, I should show you. It's got Pope County State Bank, Glenwood, Minnesota on it. Oh, it's a little ledger book. So you can track your expenses probably for like a tra traveling salesman or someone to record their expenses that is really cool it's got that in that pocket and it's got another one there probably for additional business cards maybe that is really sweet I like that and it was used you can tell the leathers nicely worn on the top oh and I keep holding this pen this is a desktop you know pen that'll stick in one of those holders but this is a Schaefer pen and that's why I grabbed it um, you can easily get refills for these. Oh, this one doesn't even look like it needs a refill. I'll have to test it out and see if it works. Let's try it right here. Uh, it's not writing it. Oh, 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 it's showing signs of working. So I'll heat that up a little bit and see if it'll it'll break free. Um, so yeah, because I, I come across the holders without the pens all the time. So this way well, I'll have a pen whenever I find a holder that I need. I don't have any at the moment. Found this vintage cookie cutter. Uh, nice little scalloped, I don't know, for gingerbread maybe? I thought that was pretty fun. And then, okay, I got to get the cuteness out of the way. I found these two cloiches with scenes, decorate them. These are vintage. Somebody made this little Christmas scene. I'm assuming it's a Christmas scene because it looks like a baby Jesus and uh, with a lamb and a person. You know, I took it as that. No. 
they may not have intended it to be that way. Uh, the glass is really dirty, so I'll give it a good clean. But yeah, it's really cool. It's a homemade piece. Somebody foiled the bottom with lace around the edge. I just think that's pretty cool. And then this was the first one I found, and this one I love. It's a partridge in a pear tree. And uh, there's the partridge. There's actually another one on the ground there. And then you can see the pears in the tree. Beautifully done. It's got a little emblem on top. And I think this one may have originally had one because there was a little glue residue on top. But it's no longer on there. But again, it's got the same gold foil on the bottom. On a styrofoam base. But I just thought those were so cool. So I'll put those down at the pink elephant. Um... All right, I'll just go in order. Found two vintage board games, Shoots and Ladders. And these are both of these are from the mid 50s. One's 55 and one's dated 56. Both boxes in excellent condition along with the board. Now I haven't counted to make sure all of the pieces are in there, but I thought, you know, these boxes are in such great shape. Chances are majority of the pieces are in there. And then here's the Candyland game, again from 1950. Five. This one's 55, so the Shoots and Ladders is 56. But I love the graphics on them. Vintage games do well. Um, I sold them on eBay and down to Pink Elephant. So they're ones that I never quite know where I really want to sell them, but we'll figure it out. Then I found this scarf. Uh, this is not, I don't believe it's a vintage scarf, but I just love the design on it. It's black and red and white it's kind of a almost a stained glass kind of or wrought iron design uh, with the sheer and then the velvet over the top of it so again i've been doing well with scarves down at the pink elephant so you know if you're interested in that one let me know there's no tag or anything on it to know a manufacturer or anything but i just thought it was a really neat little piece and then the other thing i got i don't even know how many pieces three six nine twelve piece um, pottery nativity scene. Now this is, these are typically made in Mexico. So the small hand painted guys. There's baby Jesus. So it's a little 12 piece set. And I know some of you guys collect these. Um, when I picked them up in the past, you guys have contacted me. So, and if you're interested in this white one, which is really kind of cool, let me know. There's a number of sheep. Like I said, it's a 12 piece. Overall in good condition. There was a nativity box with it, but I didn't. I mean a nativity manger scene, but I didn't grab that. Um, and then I grabbed this, speaking of porcelain, this is Model Air Porcelain Clay. And I picked this up. It's air dry because when you've got broken pieces of pottery, I was going to use this to, uh, you know, on something that I feel like is worth repairing. Um, then I could use this. So I picked that up to try that. See how that works. And then I found this mug. I love this mug. Again, 49 cents, handmade pottery mug. They, st there was a savers label on the bottom. And it's really hard to get off. So I was trying to see what the name is. It's hand signed on the bottom. Um, but I said for 49 cents, I'll do it. Inside of here is a bunch of jewelry that I found. There's this chain and bead necklace that one's pretty wild there's this one all of this jewelry is most unique um and then there's this stone beautiful like granite piece of stone on a chain this is a monet chain beautiful gold chain got a nice uh, almost herringbone weave to it um there's this, this necklace, multi-strand, a little tassel pendant on the end. This one's kind of cool. It's a artist made piece with a watch and a gem on it. This is a Swiss made movement, which I think is pretty cool. Let me see if I can see. Oops, it's got a manufacturer's name on here. R R A S F. Swiss made. It's not a jeweled movement, but hmm, that's kind of cool. Then there's this chain again with the tassel on the. This time the tassel is on the clasp, which I thought was interesting. 
but nice heavy chain. There's this bracelet that almost, it it's, looks like it's made out of um, resin, I originally thought, but it's got, it almost feels like bone to me, colored bone, so, but I don't know. Not an expert on those things, but it's a nice colorful bracelet. Then there's this arrowhead one with a cloth tie. And again, almost all of this is gonna go into a jewelry lot. There's this long necklace with a tie on the bottom. A knot. And this is the sterling silver necklace with a small charm. It's a very tiny sterling silver chain with this little circle charm on the bottom. It is marked 925, and it's got the Italy, 925 Italy. So, yeah, pretty sweet. And the last thing I got, which is this awesome wrought iron magazine rack, um, painted in a whitish gold tone. Um, hi yeah, because it's so heavy, I was able to get it for two dollars they gave me a deal when things are extra heavy they will um you know usually charge you two dollars for it if it's going to be over a certain weight and uh so i've learned to ask now when i go to the bin saying hey can i get a deal on this and then they'll say well how much does it weigh so we put it on the scale and and uh yeah because these I, i've sold this kind before and they sell really well and fairly quickly. So it's a good 25 to $40. This one's a little smaller one. So I don't know if that has extra appeal or less appeal. <laughs> but we'll figure that out. But yeah, for two bucks, I couldn't pass it up. That's what we got today, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.